Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be overclocking the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X processor, all 12 cores to 4.75 gigahertz using custom loop water cooling. The Ryzen 9 5900X is the second to top part in AMD's new Ryzen 5000 series processor family, powered by the new Zen 3 microarchitecture codenamed Vermeer. Vermeer microarchitecture is similar to the previous generations and is also powered by a 7 nanometer process node. The main benefits can be found in the significantly increased performance per clock and increased frequencies at a similar power level. The CPU is still chiplet based and features the same I.O. die as the previous generations. The Ryzen 9 5900X offers 12 cores and 24 threads with a listed base frequency of 3.7 GHz and a boost frequency up to 4.8 GHz. It is rated at 105 Watt TDP and should retail at an MSRP of $550. The CPU should be available from November 5. In this video we'll be looking at the basic steps required to get your CPU all the way to 4.75 GHz. We'll dig into four different overclocking strategies. First, we'll simply enable AMD's most aggressive performance configuration through Precision Boost Overdrive. Second, we'll push the CPU to its maximum Prime95 with AVX stable configuration. Thirdly, we'll push the CPU even further to our all-core maximum stable configuration. And lastly, we'll do some DOS overclocking. But first, let's look at the platform constraints and the specific hardware we're using for this guide. Along with the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X processor, in this guide we will be using the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard, an ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z Royal DDR4 3200 memory sticks, and of course EK water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be around $3,250. That is, $550 for the CPU, $600 of cooling, $430 for the motherboard, $200 for the bench table, $160 for the memory, and $1,300 for the graphics cards. Before we get started, let's look at some of the constraints that we'll be facing. A Ryzen 5000 CPU consists of a couple of parts. Each CPU has multiple chiplets. A chiplet is a die with specific functions such as CPU cores, I.O. hub, memory controller, and so on. All the chiplets communicate with each other via the fabric interconnect. A core chiplet die or CCD is one of the chips on the AMD CPU. While a CCD used to consist of two CCXs paired together, on Zen 3 a CCD consists of a single CCX. CCX is short for core complex. The core complex consists of eight individual cores, each with their L1 and L2 cache. They also share a large 32 megabyte L3 cache. The Ryzen 9 5900X has two CCDs with one CCX. The CCX has six out of the eight cores enabled. By default, the fabric, memory controller, and memory frequency operate in synchronous mode. That means typically the CPU will run all frequencies in a one-to-one -one ratio. In asynchronous mode, the memory controller will operate at half the frequency of the system memory. The fabric clock will also run below system memory frequency. So you will have a performance penalty. The penalty can be overcome by increasing the memory frequency to well over DDR4 4000 speeds. With all this in mind, let's jump into the benchmarks and overclocking. Here's a list of benchmarks used in this guide. SuperPi 4M, Geekbench 5, HWBot X265, Cinebench R20, ROG RealBench version 2.56, Final Fantasy 14. Before we get started with pushing the performance of the Ryzen 9 5900X processor, let's first take a look at the scoring at stock settings. Super Pi 4M, 35.992 seconds. Geekbench 5 single threaded, 1,554 points. Geekbench 5 multi threaded, 12,285 points. HWL X265 4K, 23.803 frames per second. Cinebench R20, 8,243 marks. ROG RealBench, 246,820 points. Final Fantasy XIV, 172.71 frames per second. As a first step, we will enable Precision Boost Overdrive and make use of AMD's most aggressive performance configuration. Precision Boost Overdrive aims to maximize performance in case your system is equipped with extra cooling capacity and adequate system components. 
The performance is determined by a variety of factors such as CPU temperature, type of workload, number of active cores, power consumption, current draw, and so on. When the processor has additional headroom, Precision Boost Overdrive will automatically raise frequencies. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Scroll down to Precision Boost Overdrive submenu and enable Precision Boost Overdrive. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. During the boost, we can regularly see the single threaded frequency boost to 4.9 GHz and the multi threaded frequency boost to 4.4 GHz. With PBO enabled, the maximum frequency achieved during the toughest of all workloads, Prime 95 Small FFT with AVX enabled, increases from 3.8 GHz to 4.45 GHz. Let's start manually overclocking. In addition to overclocking the CPU frequency to 4.55 GHz, we also overclock the fabric and memory controller to 1.8 GHz. We also manually increase the memory frequency to DDR4 3600 and set the memory timings. This is also the highest Prime95 small FFT with AVX stable configuration. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set memory frequency to DDR4-3600. Set fabric clock frequency to 1800 MHz. Set CPU core ratio to 45.50x. Set CPU core voltage to manual. Set CPU core voltage override to 1.3 volts. Enter the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16 16 16 16 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volts. Then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. We can notice a couple of things. First, just like with the previous generation of Ryzen CPUs, we lose performance against default settings in single threaded light workloads. The reason is that by default, the frequency would boost to 4.8 or 4.9 GHz, whereas a manual overclock well limits us to 4.55 GHz. Second, we can see a positive impact of the additional performance from overclocking the fabric and memory. This helps overcome some of the deficit we see from the lower than default boost CPU frequency. Third, in multi-thread applications, we see the performance increase of the additional CPU frequency amplified with the raised fabric and memory clock. Running Prime95 small FFT with AVX at 4550 MHz, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 88C and a peak CPU package power of 209 watts. Let's look at the post Prime95 overclocking capabilities. If we ignore Prime95, we can further increase the CPU frequency to 4.75 GHz while maintaining the same fabric and memory clock frequencies. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set Memory Frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F-Clock Frequency to 1800MHz. Set CPU Core Ratio to 47.50x. Enter the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM Timings to 16 16 16 16 36. Leave the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set CPU Core Voltage to Manual. Set CPU Core Voltage Override to 1.4V. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volts, then save and exit the BIOS. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. As expected, the performance continues to rise. DOS OC is short for dynamic OC switching, and in my opinion, it's a very smart way to work around AMD's biggest challenge when it comes to overclocking. In order to frame this perfectly, let's grab back to a previous video when we were overclocking the Matisse XT processors. When going through the numbers and discussing them with some of my industry friends, I realized that rather than having several overclocking strategies, AMD users have a set of overclocking trade-offs, but not in a bad way. Frankly, the out-of-box frequencies and resulting performance are excellent. The AMD engineers who were tasked with getting users the best possible performance at default settings did an amazing job. In fact, they did such a good job that manual overclocking can give you worse performance in certain scenarios, specifically single-threaded light workloads. When manually overclocking, you lose the benefits of automatic boost frequency. Also, 
You can't configure the boost frequencies by specific use case, for example, by core usage or per core. This is the first overclocking trade-off. Settle for lower single threaded performance with higher all core performance or the other way around. Another overclocking trade-off is that there's no way to configure the system for truly worst case scenarios, such as Prime95 small FFT with AVX. On other platforms, you can use an AVX offset ratio to temporarily reduce the performance if such workloads come your way. But on AMD, you can't. That means you have to decide whether you're willing to trade in a potentially less stable system for additional performance in certain situations. Dynamic OC switching allows us to, well, dynamically switch between OC mode and PBO. The real world implication is that you can now benefit from those very aggressive frequencies offered by PBO that go well over your manual overclock. DOS OC requires very little additional configuration work. We'll show you the configuration for both our maximum Prime95 stable and our maximum all-core manual overclock. Upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set Memory Frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F-Clock Frequency to 1800 MHz. Enter the CPU Core Ratio per CCX submenu. Set Core VID to 1.3. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 45.50. Set CCD1 CCX0 ratio to 45.50. Enable dynamic OC switching. Set current threshold to switch to OC mode to 125 amps. Leave the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Enter the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enable precision boost overdrive. Leave the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enter the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM timing control submenu. Set DRAM voltage to 1.4 volts, then save and exit the BIOS. For manual OC, upon entering the BIOS, navigate to the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to Manual. Set Memory Frequency to DDR4-3600. Set F-Clock Frequency to 1800 MHz. Enter the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Set core VID to 1.4. Set CCD0 CCX0 ratio to 47.50. Set CCD1 CCX0 ratio to 47.50. Enable dynamic OC switcher. Set current threshold to switch to OC mode to 35 amps. Leave the CPU core ratio per CCX submenu. Enter the precision boost overdrive submenu. Enable precision boost overdrive. Leave the Precision Boost Overdrive submenu. Enter the DRAM Timings Control submenu. Set DRAM Timings to 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. Leave the DRAM Timing Control submenu. Set DRAM Voltage to 1.4 volts. Then save and exit the BIOS. Before we get to the performance comparison, I want to have a quick word on the current threshold value. The key thing to keep in mind is that DOS OC will switch between OC mode and performance boost overdrive, so you can benefit from the aggressive single thread frequency and performance offered by PBO. The current threshold is one of the ways to determine the exact point at which the modes switches. Anything above the current threshold will force OC mode. Anything below the current threshold will force PBO mode. The exact trigger point will depend on your CPU, your motherboard, your cooling, and your system. One way of identifying the right trigger point is to check the CPU current during a benchmark workload. I'll give you an example. First, make sure the system is set to default settings with Precision Boost Overdrive enabled. Then, go into the operating system and load Hardware Info and Prime95 without AVX. Gradually increase the amount of Prime95 threads until you see the operating frequency drop below your desired manual overclock. When this happens, check the CPU current in Hardware Info, and this is the value you can use to configure DOS OC. As a rule of thumb, you should expect a high manual overclock to have a low current threshold and vice versa. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation at both our maximum Prime95 stable and our maximum all-core manual overclocks. Comparing the performance gains with and without DOS OC, we can see that with DOS OC enabled, we're able to squeeze a little bit more performance. All right, let's wrap this up. 
To be honest, I was quite pleasantly surprised by both the performance increase as well as the overclocking headroom of the Ryzen 5000 series processor. I think those two elements combined make this quite a compelling product for enthusiasts. On the overclocking side, there's not really that much difference, meaning that the same challenges that existed on the Zen 1 and the Zen 2 processors still exist on the Zen 3 processors as well. Mainly, if you're tuning for a worst case scenario like Prime 95 with AVX, then you're going to be losing a lot of single threaded performance. The biggest thumbs up for me goes to the ACES engineers for implementing DOS OC. DOS OC basically allows you to benefit from the really aggressive PBO frequencies in light workloads while also benefiting from the hard work that you put into manual tuning. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you liked it, you know what to do. And till the next time.